Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you something. I got some parts in the mail. You know, we're building them uh, big, big 66 Magnum, 100 cc. These are the cranks right here. They're a nice crank. That's brand new. It's a NWP. We've tested these. We really like them. Uh, I think in most cases they're stronger than OEM. Yeah, I know. You won't believe me until you run them. But uh, they really are. Uh, you know, we had this. Well, we got this uh, saw here that uh, Yank Noodle's uh, brother-in-law. We got that bunch of it together. Monday morning's all about support work. Throw the cylinder on and one thing another. Just like always, we built a hundred of them. It, uh, so how you been? Good, I hope. Me too. It's a really nice day. We've had a lot of rain this week, one thing or the other. I want to introduce you to a subscriber and a new friend. Ladies, this is Eric Nelson <laughs> from Massachusetts. How's everybody doing? Hope, hope everybody's good. He's a, he's a logger. He's a real McCoy. Got his own skidder. He's paid his dues just like the rest of us. It, uh, how old are you now? I'm 46. 46. You're doing good, ain't you? <laughs> I try to. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah, you're doing real good. You're doing fantastic. Uh, he uh, brought up an Alaskan mill uh, that's going to be for sale, unless I decide I'm going to buy it. But we got one here. Uh, I've never tried one before. We might just throw a 394 on it and see what they do. Is that thinking we'd probably fight a log around here somewhere, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a Johnson Red 600 plus chainsaw mill. So it's got two 10 foot pieces of track that join up and there's a rolling carriage that rolls down the entire piece of track. And it's ideal, you roll a log onto it, it cuts up a beam in no time, you know, especially powering it with one of these Husqvarna's or, uh, or anything. You can mount anything to it and uh, pretty neat. It's portable, you can drop it down in the woods, set it up, level it up, roll your logs onto it, almost, you could do it by yourself. And, uh, you know, we, we heard about, um, you know, Mr. Graber getting all banged up, and I'm like, man, you know, it, it'd be nice to step up and donate some stuff to, uh, to Harvey here to sell to make sure this guy gets a few bucks, you know. It, it's nice, everybody's donating a little bit of money in that that's huge, but you know, a nice payment is it helps even more because you know those are lingering issues that they're gonna have, and you know you, they work with their backs to make a living, and and if he's busted up, then you know it's tough, it's tough. So we definitely want to take care of him. Young Mister Nelson's good at this, isn't he? You heard it from the horse's mouth what that mill is and where the money's going. And uh, I got a couple saws coming in. People are uh, bringing in. Uh, one of them is a local guy, and he wants me to go through them. And uh, I said I'd do it, and uh, we're going to sell them, and you'll get that money. We did close that account down. Uh, it just got where it dwindled down. But I'm not done trying to help these people on a personal basis. Uh, I just want you to know that. And uh, I'll probably for the next three or four months uh, be working behind the, behind the scenes doing things that uh, that work out. And it's people like Eric Nelson that helps them, you know. And uh, But if it's something that I decide I wanted to have, uh, I'm going to donate the cash to them. Otherwise, we're going to sell it. And uh, the money goes to them. So either way, they're going to make out. Because I don't think the man wants that mill yet. And that would be an awful long way to try to figure out how to get it there. Uh, I, I suppose it would break down where we could ship it if we had to, but it'd be better to just pick it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it, something like that'll sell. You know, you got to find a guy that wants something like that. Okay, Eric seen our horses. He got some horses and donkey stuff of his own. What'd you think of Prince? Oh, he's beautiful. Man, what a gorgeous horse. <laughs> it's impressive. Animals are really impressive, and it's more impressive what he does. Um, you know, Harvey and I have spoken about it. And, you know, my grandfathers worked with horses and logging you know way back in the day and it's it's man it's impressive to see what that animal can do and where it can go in bad conditions and it's uh he's he's really something yeah he's, he's a nice really horse. something gentle isn't he oh. <laughs> he's uh he's beautiful that's just all you can say he's he's i mean he's he's like a piece of cast iron plate he's so uh <laughs> he's unbelievable Unbelievable muscle tone, and he's really, really healthy. Obviously, Harvey takes good, good care of him, all of his animals, and it was really nice to see that. 
Eric's uh, staying the weekend. Tomorrow, we're going to go up and we're going to hit the woods. And we're going to cut a smoke with some saws. We're going to just, it's not about, we're going to cut some firewood. But it's not about, gee, I need to cut my winter uh, wood and have this man help me. I, it's not about that. It's about us enjoying each other's company, getting to know each other well. He's got mad skills. I got a few left, you know. I'm 10% left, I told you that. <laughs> And uh, we had uh, he brought some saws, so hey, we're gonna see what happens there, and uh, we're gonna trade around. I'm gonna try his, he's gonna try mine. Jacob, buddy, we're uh, running your saw tomorrow, your 372. I just fired it for this man. Uh, you guys hear him on video, you don't, you don't actually know what they sound like, do they? Well, it's, it's totally different. That, that thing, you, you, <laughs> way you run that thing, you're gonna be so, so blown away. It's, it's beautiful. It sounds incredible. It's, oh wow. It's torquey. It's everything. It's everything. That's, that's a production saw. That's for sure. You're getting the real deal. <laughs> what, uh, being a logger, how long you been logging? Um, off and on, 20 years. So you've been more than one or two days. Well, yeah. yeah. What is it you, as a logger, uh, like about saws. I mean, w what's your pet peeves? And just talk about what a logger in the Northeast needs for a saw. Oh, just got to be reliable. Um, it's got to cut good. You know, there's nothing better than when you pick up the saw and put it into the wood. It just chews through it, smooth, effortless. You know, it doesn't overheat. It it just keeps cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting because that's what it's all about. You don't make any money if that's not work and if that's not working. It's not sharp. It's not well taken care of. And you know, you dress your bars, you clean them, blow them off. You don't want to destroy the wood. You're getting halfway through it. You don't have enough power. Or the chain ain't sharp, and the barber chairs on you. You're getting you're gonna get into into some trouble. So a reliable good saw is top. In some timber, it is a horsepower game in the Northeast, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Hardwood is, you know, cutting through, you know, stuff on the West Coast because I did some cutting out there. You know, it's softer wood and, you know, fast, you know, Huskies are great in that kind of timber and they cut excellent. They cut well out here, too, but I, I like running the steels. They got just a bit more torque and so you can really lean on them and, and uh, you know, get through that wood, you know, so you're not ruining it. And uh, it's important. So yeah, being a West Coast cutter and East Coast cutter, uh, what's the biggest difference in the wood density? Is it the, just the size of the trees so much bigger out there? Oh, they're huge. They're massive. Uh, you know, I was in some areas where there was some old growth redwood cutting and that was going on in the 90s. And there it's, it's, red, it's soft, soft, soft wood. You could take and stand it up and just touch it with a hatchet and it, it blows into a shake it's really soft wood and uh even with the dug fur and is is it's beautiful stuff to cut it really it's clean it <laughs> it's effortless to you know when you got a good run and saw those huskies really kick butt in that stuff and uh it steals too and uh you know out here the wood density is just completely different you know you can't have saws too aggressive. They just start jumping around and, and uncontrollable. And uh, you, you want to, you know, have control of the wood all, all you know, the You're whole talking time. about your, uh, uh, your the, chain, the rakers. Yeah, you can't have your, your rakers. Sharpening. Yeah, and, and it's sawtooth angle, too. Not too steep on the, on the, on the sawtooth angle, you know. And your rakers just have to be, like, like Buckin says, you know, just perfect. And... And the saw just is no better feeling when it just glides through the wood, you know, and it feels good in your hands and it's doing an excellent job. It's cutting straight. It's, you know, <laughs> it's tough to explain, but it's, it's, it's an awesome, awesome feeling. That's why it's, you get addicted to it. <laughs> you get, you got two old time loggers here trying to talk about this <coughs> stuff, people. Uh, pay attention. They ain't nothing but a joke. Now, here's the deal. We, when we change species from ash to oak to maple, and even in the wintertime when that maple froze, you know how it does that? I'll change my top plate angle so I can cut that easier. I'll, I'll bring that forward a little more. Do you do that where you're oh, at? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Between rotten and dry wood that's hard as a rock, or whether you get into pine, you're changing with species of wood, you're changing the angle, you know? And how, if it's dead or seasoned or... It's, Tons of different scenarios. You could change that tooth angle three times in a day if you needed to. Yeah, and what we, what I always did was as I'm going, I can see what I'm cutting for the next two inches coming. Yeah, and when I need to sharpen, I'll change an angle 
for what the average conditions are. Exactly. If it's one darn frozen maple somewhere, I just deal with it. Right. But, you know, you can't do it for every tree. But uh, Buckin told me out there, he says he don't ever change his top plate angle. Now, sometimes we drop that, we drop that file down just to, about to right there, about 10 degrees, mm -hmm. maybe 15. And uh, it, it, that changes... And then your top angle, you'll you'll bring it back or bring it forward. The harder cutting stuff, I always went forward. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. The idea is you're trying to form a proper chip. The whole all day long, you're reading your chips, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You check and see how it comes out of the saw, and then you know when you got it right, you know it, you feel it. You know, it's just. It's, it's, you know, like I said, it's amazing. It just, it cuts so efficiently, and it makes your day a whole lot easier. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to try to get into bucket stock just next year. What do you think? Absolutely. I I got to be there. You, you know, got to. I, it's overwhelming. Yeah, he's a he's a great man, and I commented, you know, um, the people there are just, just incredible. It's a, it's a great bunch of people. Everybody's respectful. It's uh it's about having fun, you know. It's good for kids. It's good for everything. Everybody's having a great time. It's uh, it's chainsaws, which we're all addicted to. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you something, Eric. Uh, uh, believe it or not, when I was out there, you know what impressed me the most? When you get that many people together in that big of a spot, I'm used to trash and gum wrappers and cans and bottles and yeah. crap everywhere. You know what? There was nothing. There was no arguments. There was no miscommunications. Nope. Nothing. You didn't have to tell anybody to do anything. They know what to do. They knew you know. exactly what to do. The, all of you are good people, and we're glad you're here. Uh, just, just more than you know. Uh, in the comments, you know, once in a while uh, somebody starts sticking out. Uh, I got one right now that's sticking out, and uh, it's a girl, Peggy E. How you doing? I love your comments. Do you run your own saw? I want to know that. You got interest? You got somebody in your life that likes saws, or are we just funny? I just, I just gotta know this, you know. <laughs> it, uh, but I, I want to tell you, you leave really good comments. Mike Yoyos, another one. Bill Block, on and on. There's so many. I, I'm so bad with names. If you guys, I could give you a number system. I could remember about 500 of you. But I can't, and there's a lot of you now, you know, you know, we're in, we got, uh, we're all over the world. We got 27 countries right now that uh, people are watching us pretty steady, you know. We got quite a few Scots picked right up, you know. Uh, the majority is here in the U.S. because we're just a massive population that are bored to tears and everybody watches and and uh, somehow they like what we do, so we're going to keep doing it. What do you think? And uh, it, uh Okay, I gotta mention something. I, I was gonna keep this quiet, but I, I can't hold a secret. <laughs> Decal. If you ain't watching it, this one you turn it on. I'm gonna build you a 372, and I'm gonna you're gonna like it. I just want you to know that. We got a thing there, don't we? I'm gonna build you a very very nice one, and I want to thank you for everything you do. A landfill rat, Kellinger. Buck and Billy, there's a lot behind the scenes. When you get something like Buck and Stock, one man ain't going to do that alone. It's team effort. These are people that stand there and just pound it to make this stuff happen. Uh, decal, good man. I'm going to give you something worthy of owning. And uh, I'm going to do it as soon as we can. We got parts on order. They're on back order. We won't get, it'll be three weeks probably before I start. Unless some parts come in early, then we'll be starting right away. I believe I've already got a saw coming my way that's a nice one to begin with. That's always that's always a wonderful thing. But, uh, and Buckin, thank you. You're a good man. You've done a lot for us. But uh, We're just a little bitty channel compared to the most, but... I want you to know it's really appreciated. Uh, it, uh, you excited about cutting tomorrow? <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to have fun. I, got, I mean, Jacob, man, that saw, where do you get it? You're going to be so impressed. It's, it's kind of blew me away. You know, to, to, like Harvey said, once you get a chance to hold it and run it, it's, you know, the video doesn't, doesn't do it justice. You know, not like running it. <laughs> 
He's he gonna he's gonna run your saw, Jacob. He does incre he does incredible work, and and it's it's a real treat to to be here and to talk to him and to to meet his wife and and uh, yeah, you know it's it's been an experience. It will, will be an experience to remember for a long time, for sure. Okay, you heard it. It uh, too old logger. He's still logging all the time. I'm not. Uh, I'm getting back in the swing. That weight thing. Uh, Boy, that ball, I'll tell you what, that's helped me a lot. If you guys need to consider that, uh, everybody tells you it's all about your core. You don't understand it until until you improve it. All of a sudden, things are better. Hey, what do you think about these bikes and that, that Mako and that Honda? <laughs> you think them bikes are worth riding or what? Oh God! It's like Ivy said. If it's if it's the best, it's already been built, and then. Those those speak for themselves. They're incredible, and they're uh, they're fun fun to ride, <laughs> fun to ride. And you know, I was impressed with Harvey's video and how quick that Suzuki gets up. You know, and uh, I mean, man, you can lay on that thing and it just keeps going. There's like no end in sight to it. So <laughs> yeah, that's a ripper. That three seventy. Uh, that was built yeah. seventy seven. Yeah, you were going easy on it too, Harv. You know, man, you put the boots to that. It's gonna you're gonna be it's pulling. It's I, I pulling. never went past uh, half throttle. Yeah, that's no joke. Yeah. I'm breaking the motor and I don't yeah. wind it very tight. Yeah, you know they're old like me. You know we break easy. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can absolutely can. You know? So yeah, everybody be careful. Definitely don't put yourself in any situations to hurt yourself. So just think, you know, like how Billy he looks at everything very closely and. One little mistake, and that's it. You know, it's like Harvey said; it's not a matter of if, it's when. We so. don't we don't play with saws. We take them serious. Uh, all of you are pretty good with saws. You wouldn't be here, or at least have an interest in them. And uh, I want to know something from you. Leave it in the comments. If you had a dream saw, that if we built another series of ten. What would you like to see next? Okay. I'm going to only build one a month because I'm not going to let the loyal people that send me saws uh, every week down. I'm going to build their saws right along, but i got time to build one a month. Daryl, Daryl Burgess, Slammer, he's getting one of these. But he's getting, we already had that cooked out. He, that one that was on a bench that uh, was extra, he's getting that one. And uh, he's going to get, it's going to be 100cc also. And uh, they figure out 99 plays something there, but they're 100cc class. So, uh, okay, we're going to cut this video short. Uh, my boy came home. I'm going to go pester him. And, uh, hey, I think Barb's made a real nice beef stew for supper. We might even get some homemade biscuits. What do you think of that? Oh, my God. But, uh, I don't think I'm going to be leaving. No, I mean, we'll just adopt you. you know? <laughs> my goodness, maybe what I need to do is buy another skitter. I think me and him would do pretty good. I'd get me in shape, wouldn't I? Oh, yeah. What would take, about two, three weeks? Oh, less than that. Two, we'd be fine in a couple days. It, uh, I don't know if I would. I uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to get uh, back in shape. Uh, I am going to be doing a little bit of horse logging as soon as I find a mate for Prince, you know, a harness mate. And I, I got other loggers around. Uh, I pretty much just grab a saw and... Walk on any log job around here, and they know who I am. I just don't have to say nothing. Just go right in and start cutting. They'd be just happy. And uh, believe it or not, I ought to try that. Of course, right out of video, I'd probably get my <laughs> butt kicked or something by a freaking serious log. Say, who the heck are you? Yeah, that'd be funny. But okay, that's it for today. We are gonna get some GoPro footage. I'll get something on the phone to put up for tomorrow, <coughs> so you guys ain't missing me. Okay. Tell them all goodbye, Eric. Take care. Everybody have a good one. Okay. Thank you.